Hey family, Peter here. Um, I'm just considering something. It's on my mind, just laid on my mind at this time. We're looking at corruption in Nigeria. And um, we're seeing how this um, has eaten deep into the psyche of the nation. Let me put this collar down here. We have seen how corruption has eaten deep into the psyche of this once virile nation. And I'm wondering, how do we bring this to an end? How does this hydra-headed monster find its rest? You see, uh, when you go around the nation every institution of our nation is bedeviled by this beast corruption from the police um to the judiciary um our politicians the executive arm of government issue that has to do with the end of corruption now it becomes very important for me as a preacher of the kingdom of God that this monster that has crippled the nations it has actually been muted it has actually been destroyed by the cross and the work of the ministry the church has been mandated to proclaim a new era to the nation a new era i'm talking about the era of the reign of christ and the reign of christ with the destruction of sin corruption which is an expression of sin as i'm talking let the scripture come to your mind righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people you want to know where sin reigns and you want to see where corruption has taken its reign over the systems. That's how we see the governance, the ruling of sin. Now, here is what I'm saying. As the body of Christ, we have been mandated with a responsibility to make strict adherent followers of the teachings of Christ. We have been mandated with the responsibility to help the nation find her place in God's trans-dispensational plan to lead the nations on the earth. We have also been mandated with the responsibility to teach the nation to observe, to do all that our Lord has commanded us. It's very important for us to recognize that the, 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 the demand to deliver on the Great Commission will require that we check that monster called corruption. Sorry, my hand is a little painted here. We are here to check the monster called corruption. It's very important that we awake to our responsibility to check this monster. And how do we do it? We do it by the preaching of the kingdom of God. We do it by the preaching. We want to declare the start of a new era. The era where the people, Nigerians, have, you see, they have received victory. Victory over sin has been declared over Nigeria. We need to communicate it to Nigerians. And it will require that we operate with a new priesthood. It, it will require that we operate with priesthood in the order of Melchizedek, where we can come from the realms of the spirit and communicate bread and wine for Nigeria. Bread and wine to solve the issue of corruption today is to let Nigerians know that God has given us a way to bring corruption to an end. And, and that's when we come to terms with the gift that God has given, the person of the Holy Spirit, especially when we are looking at his fruit, self-control. You see, in my teachings, I've come to um, relate to how God has given us grace, how grace helps us to say no to the cravings of the lusts 
that uh, people who belong to the world, people who live in this world are privy to. Everybody is privy to lost. But God has given the way out. So that when lost creeps up on your heart, right? You can depend on the grace of God to say no. And that's how corruption actually ends. Because corruption thrives because of the frailty of the souls of the degenerate man. The degenerate man has no power over lost. The degenerate man cannot say no when the opportunity comes for him to satisfy the lust of his flesh, the lust of his eyes, and the pride of life. In fact, this is the foundation of the corruption that has become the bane of our development today. Is that people in position of power, people that have the privilege of an authority that has been bequeathed on them, they really do not have power over lust. They really do not have power to say no to the cravings of their lusts. And that's why you will see somebody like Yaya Bello. He will um, pay up front the fees for educating his children from the coffers of public funds. That's, that's, that's it's a, it's a soulish issue here. It's an issue with the degenerate mind, the degenerate soul. He has no power to stop the um, the longings of his loss, the longings of his of his um, pride, the longings of his ego, the longings of his of his um, flesh, and that's what we must bring to an end. If we want to end corruption, we must deal with it because corruption is not just it's not a moral problem, but say corruption is a soulish problem. People who subscribe to that earth code so that's what i call it it's an earth code it means whatever the the world lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life places on their hearts they are yielding at all times that's how they have been able to cripple nations that's how they have, they have been able to ruin institutions because they, they've not developed that strength to say no when the lurings of lust come about you see our gospel becomes important here because we are given the power to say no we receive the power from another dimension, the realms of the spirit. The Holy Spirit actually helps us say no. So what we must do, we must go beyond the practice of a religion. We must go beyond the practice of Christianity. And then we must begin to teach people how to lead this life that puts sin and all the things that build up from loss to put them at bay. The self-controlled life. This should be what the church should promote in the nation. A nation that's bedeviled by corruption needs the gospel preached to it. And the gospel is good news that God has given his grace to help you say no to sin. So the campaign to end corruption must be strategic in that it, is, it runs among our streets. It runs among our, our, the, the, the alleys of our universities. It runs among, within our government parastatals, runs within the hospitals runs within the the police stations we are declaring victory over sin and we are promoting self-control as what everybody needs to be able to live an upright life this is the work of the ministry and it will require more like campaigns and mobilizations just like a politician but now we are bringing up a new government we are bringing up a new government that deals with the conditioning of the morality of the people you want to condition the morality of the people you want to condition their souls beloved this work is the reserve of the church that is assigned to nigeria the body of christ that is assigned to nigeria has the responsibility to announce this military victory over sin that's how we can end corruption we're actually ending corruption by the grace of God. We're not promoting a religion. We're promoting dependence on the Spirit of God. My God. Dependence on the Spirit of God to live above the frequency of corruption. We are promoting it as our work. It's actually the work of the ministry that God has given the church to carry out among the nations. If we must bring the scourge of corruption to an end we must promote 
the Holy Spirit inspired life. That means we must help the people see their nakedness. Help them. Help them see their nakedness as people who are devoid of the Spirit of God. Help them see how naked they are. And help them see how God wants to, to, to cause them to stand. You see, it's because they don't see this. That's why everybody's trying in his mind. You try your mind to get into a political office. And then once you are there, you see that you are a slave to the cares of the world. You see that you are a slave to, to, to the world, the system of the world. And this must stop. If we must nip uproot this demon that has caused our nation, we must begin to propagate the gospel, to preach the gospel in a way that can help the degenerate man find a way to stand by the grace of God. This is very important because it will require that Nigerians receive a new birth. So we are promoting the new birth as the way to come into that realm where you now cash into the help of the grace of God. You see, I'm not talking about Christianity here. I'm not talking about making people a part of a Christian church. I am promoting a new order. And this new order is mobilized by the church. The church assigned to our respective cities. We are marked with the responsibility to carry out these campaigns so that we can leave the presence of God within the institutions. And then people can know how they can actually find counsel when they, you see, if you are working in a government parastatal, you must be submitted to the counselors, the body of Christ that have presented the presence, God's presence in that institution. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It goes beyond the church. I'm not talking about what happens in the church now. I'm talking about what happens in the, in the alleys of the, uh, the government secretariat. I'm talking about what happens in the boardrooms or the board building of universities. We want to put the presence of God there so that the people can present within the institutions that will help people go through the process to go through the process of implementing the spirit inspired disposition to life it's very important take the gospel to where the gospel is needed do you understand take the gospel to where it is needed the the doorstep of the politician the doorstep of the of the of the lecturers the doorstep of the students we want to start developing the culture of dependency on the grace of god this is the only way we can bring an end to corruption and this is exactly what the kingdom of god is about the kingdom of god is about producing gospel church states within the nations among the nations states that are void of the expression of corruption it's possible if we believe this gospel that i'm preaching the gospel takes the believer out of the four walls of a church and presents believers within the systems of nations where we can establish frameworks that will guide or guidelines that will guide the operation of people within these institutions it becomes very important for us to recognize that this is what god wants of the church the church assigned to nigeria was saddled with the responsibility to ensure that nigerians have become christ compliant the church um assigned to every nation because as i'm saying about nigeria now i want you to look at every nation we must have our own presence in the institutions and we must begin to propagate advance the things that border around the governance of righteousness we want to get the governance of the nations we want to establish righteousness as the as the policy statement that the nation is making very important now you see what i'm saying it might be shoved aside by religious people who have practiced their religion for so many years build their thriving empires and institutions and uh, all they have succeeded in doing is to supervise the ruin of nations supervise the growth of corruption many of them may shove what i'm saying aside but if you shove what i'm saying aside there's no way you can shove the the next religio economic system that is presenting just beyond the borders of democracy 
have, have announced it because it's become very clear to us we've understood by the books and we have seen the telltale signs of the end of an era of of the western antichrist the end of the era of democracy and um, we have actually beckoned or heralded the the start of an era of Easternization. we are seeing a new um religio social economic political twist it's coming from the kings of the east and they are coming against the backdrop of the fa frailties the failures of the western system the east is rising against the backdrop of the failures of the western system and it's becoming clear now that the western system actually failed because of the frailty of the human soul and we're looking at corruption here the frailty of the human soul human soul is frail and when you put governments on the shoulder of frail humanity what you get is a corrupt government so the government of the people by the people and for the people actually turned out to be government of seen by seen and foreseen and the only thing that this government did was to leave ruined and desolate places in their wake and so this rising eastern kings they are promoting socialism they are promoting um social communism let me not say communism because many people in the west have looked at communism as something that is evil but i want you to look intently that this second this rising or emergent economic system political system that's why i put all the work together social political economical religious system is going to promote um I want to call it technocracy. I've talked about it, technocracy. And we'll see how technology will play its part in strengthening the institutions. Technology will be made to play its part in the strengthening of the institutions. Basically, because of the moral weakness of man, um, technology will be incorporated into the institutions to ensure that the decision making process, the choices that men make, will be technocratic technocratic in that technology will influence much of the decisions in the government technology will influence most of the decisions in banking technology will influence most of the conditioning of the banking system in the policing technology will influence policing and that's where we are going into now um basically we are seeing that man's human might cannot secure good government so technology will be incorporated or adapted into the human setup human moral psychological setup and you see what i'm saying is still very difficult for many people to understand but there's no way you run away from it if you reject the message of the kingdom that i'm preaching where people of your nation slaves to corruption can repent and depend on the grace of god to say no <laughs> to receive the power to say no when the opportunity for corruption um, comes about there's no way you reject the technocratization of your nation there's no way you will re reject the, the the coming wave of technocracy there is no way you reject the coming wave of um, um social communism there's no way you will reject the, the final expression of the system of the beast we're looking at the beast system and the beast system is actually it's any system that man is running today any system that rejects the reign of christ any system that rejects the adaptation of the principles of the kingdom of heaven into the way nations are governed that system is antichrist it's beast system that's the system that we are in today and this beast system is evolving Democracy is just one stage in the evolution of the beast system. What did he leave behind? He left desolation. He left ruin. He left corruption. He left sin in his trail. Systems that were built on the back of sin. That's what he left in his trail. The next stage is coming. It's the final stage. And is the stage of technocracy. You don't want to be standing without help when that stage opens up amongst the nations. When that stage comes on upon the nations and new institutions are built, new systems are built, sometimes new nations are birthed. You don't want to be without the help that God has given at that time. That's why you come to terms with what I'm saying. I took my time, 20 minutes, to 
break into this issue basically if you listen intently you will see that what i'm looking at is the birthing of the kingdom of god preaching church the kingdom of god preaching church that will deliver um um priestly service in the order of melchizedek who came out of the realms of the spirit and then he brought bread and then wine that will condition the nations because he wants to see the status of the nations change he brought bread the word of god this is the word that will govern your conduct this is supposed to be your policy that will govern your conduct the commandment of our king it should govern your conduct our king says you should love the lord your god with all your heart all your might all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself right this should govern your conduct and then to to cause this thing to be i have also presented wine for you and this talks about the intoxication of the holy ghost this talks about the holy ghost the empowerment that you need to lead that upright life where you are obeying the commandments of god that's the new priesthood that we're talking about they came out of the realms of the spirit with bread and wine and a blessing upon nations so that nations can indeed become inherited by god nations indeed can become christ compliant nations and how do you know christ compliant nations nations that have churches assigned to them churches coming out from the realms of the spirit presenting bread and wine for the nation so that the nations can eat and then the nations can give their tithe the nations can give their institutions the nations can give their systems the nations can give their policing the nations can give their educational system so that the church can put their presence and the presence of the authority of the earth yeshua hamashiach the highest name that god has given for the earth to be governed on the king of the kings of the earth the presence of the king of the kings of the earth can be inculcated into their institutions see if you reject what i'm saying there's no way you you reject the inculcation of technology into your institutions whatever i'm saying now is clear we need a new church a new church is operating with new covenant is operating with a new priesthood that means the church does not have clergy and laity the church does not have board members the church does not have denominational names the church does not have set men the church does not have general overseers the church does not have church billboard it doesn't have a corporate affairs commission license it does not have everything that you have used to know what a church is we are talking about a new breed of church now we're talking about the church that operates with the priesthood in the order of melchizedek we're looking at a kingdom of priests they are coming out of the realms of the spirit they are coming with bread and wine their message is directed at impacting the nations to them the gospel of the kingdom is preached to towns this gospel of the kingdom is preached to towns so that towns can inculcate the policy statement that christ represents towns can inculcate righteousness so righteousness is something that is adapted into the institutions of a nation so that the nation can be posited in christ compliance this is exactly what i'm talking about today i'm talking about this church that represents a new day for the nations talking about this church that represents new wine for the nations new wine new wine behind this era of corruption that's where we started it all behind the era of corruption new wine behind the era where our police force are broken we don't need cameras on their body no 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 we need righteousness in their policing that's what we need we need righteousness in their policing righteousness in the heart of members of our police force righteousness in their heart will make them love enforcement servants 
and no more law enforcement agents that's what we need the righteousness in their heart if you reject righteousness in the heart of nigeria's police there is no way you will reject cameras and technology on their clothes i don't know if you understand what i said if you reject righteousness lodged in the policing in nigeria there is no way you will reject the the cage the digital prison that the fourth expression of the beast system will bring into police force in most nations of the third world i'm saying this today to help people know that's a new day the new day requires a new priesthood from the church a new system the gospel is even new because the gospel that we're talking about now is not taking people to heaven this gospel is bringing heaven to the earth this gospel is ending breaking the back of corruption so that david can rise and bring an end to goliath's reign that's the gospel i'm talking about if you want to see the rise of david you want to see the rise of david contemporary david's they are rising with the staff in their hand they are rising with shepherd's bag because we are looking at the building of this new church it's a new church that's actually training the believer how to serve bread and wine to nations it's a new church that's training believers how to preach the gospel to cities it's a new church here if you want to see this new church come come to me you want to see this new church come to me you want to experience this newness come to me we will operate from out of the light we will operate from the viewpoint of christ we will operate from glory and reach into the nations with salvation my name is peter um i took this almost 30 minutes to break into this this realm of thought basically to help us see the end and life on the other side of this corruption laden experience that has become our national experience i'm speaking for nigerians i'm speaking to nigerians and i speak from the city of calgary today till i see you shalom from here mighty, you are mighty. You are